Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Today I'm sampling all the myriad ways that the great men and women of history are portrayed across the multiverse, starting with Theodore Roosevelt. In my humble opinion, Theodore Roosevelt is the Batman of American presidents. He was an old money aristocrat who fought crime and corruption wherever it was found. He overcame asthma as a youth, studied history and biology, boxed, hunted, was a rancher and a frontier lawman, a police commissioner in New York City, and he formed the Rough Riders to fight in the Spanish-American War. Then he became president after William McKinley was assassinated, making him the youngest president ever. His presidency was marked by trust busting, the start of the conservation movement, the start of the construction of the Panama Canal, the Great White Fleet's tour around the world, and negotiated end to the Russo-Japanese War, which earned him a Nobel Peace Prize. And he still had time to play tennis and train in jiu-jitsu. Plus, he was tough. If deadliest warrior can be believed, he could totally kick Lawrence of Arabia's ass. He once got shot giving a speech in Milwaukee, and instead of being a wimp and going to a hospital, he just gave his would-be assassin a disapproving look and finished his speech. If he was bored, he would shame American soldiers by outriding them, and when he retired from the presidency, he didn't go into lecture circuit or build a library, he went big game hunting in Africa and explored the ominously named River of Doubt. As you can imagine, having such an awesome life would get the attention of alternate historians, who would love to put Teddy into some weird situations. One alternate historian who was a huge fan of Roosevelt is Mike Resnick. He wrote several short stories regarding the present, all of which were collected in the 2008 anthology, The Other Teddy Roosevelt's, which features this odd cover where it looks like Cthulhu is giving Teddy an unwanted back rub. Oof. Several of the stories were alternate histories, including The Light That Blinds, The Claws That Catch, where Roosevelt's first wife, Alice, does not die in 1884, and to protect her fragile health, Teddy doesn't get involved in politics, and instead retires to a quiet life as a naturalist, but can't stop dreaming of what might have been. Then there is Bully, where Roosevelt takes up an actual offer he received to overthrow Belgian colonial rule in the Congo in 1910. In this story, Teddy is successful in driving the Belgian authorities out, but finds getting the natives to adopt democracy is harder than he thinks. And we can't forget the World War I-inspired short story over there, where an annoyed President Woodrow Wilson finally relents to allowing Roosevelt to reform the Rough Riders to fight on the Western Front in 1917. There, Teddy and his comrades get a harsh lesson on modern warfare when he leads a cavalry charge against entrenched German machine gun positions. Nevertheless, when it comes to Roosevelt, most alternate historians, including Resnick, are more interested in what would happen if Roosevelt was elected president in 1912. Now, in our timeline, Theodore Roosevelt ran for president in 1912 as a third-party candidate after he broke with the Republican Party. He did amazingly well, coming in second place. Some speculate he could have won if he hadn't been shot during that aforementioned assassination attempt, and thus the 1912 election has become a popular point of divergence, with stories ranging from Mike Resnick's short story, The Bull Moose at Bay, to S.M. Sterling's upcoming 2018 novel, The Black Chamber. Most predict a successful Roosevelt presidency in 1912, especially in regards to World War I. Several authors speculate that had Roosevelt been president, America would have entered World War I earlier and could have defeated Germany more decisively, and thus avoiding the circumstances that led to the rise of the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. That said, I read one story where Roosevelt being president in 1912 leads to things being worse. In Ken Newman and Eugene Byrne's story, Ten Days That Shook the World, which is part of their Back in the USSA series, Roosevelt is elected president in 1912, but is assassinated shortly thereafter, after personally trying to break up a Chicago labor strike. This leads to Roosevelt's vice president, Charles Foster Kane, becoming president, and his corrupt administration's poor handling of World War I leads to a communist revolution to break out in America that parallels the Russian revolution of our timeline. Wow. Who would have thought the guy with the reputation of breaking monopolies would be the linchpin of American capitalism? And yes, that aforementioned Charles Foster Kane is the same Kane from Citizen King. Newman is known for writing alternate histories that mash up pop culture with the real world. Check out his excellent Anno Dracula series for another example of it. Speaking of real people interacting with fictional characters, did you know Roosevelt fought Martians? There have been a few stories pitting Teddy against the invaders from H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Of course, Regnet wrote one called the Roosevelt Dispatches, which appeared in the 1996 collection War of the Worlds Global Dispatches, where Roosevelt encounters a Martian while fighting in Cuba during the Spanish-American War. My favorite depiction, however, Roosevelt laying a smackdown on Martians, has to be from War of the Worlds Goliath, the 2012 animated sequel to Wells' original story. In this timeline, Roosevelt leads a multinational defense force preparing for the inevitable return of the Martians, and features him rising on top of a human-built battle tripod while carrying a portable heat ray. Just fantastic. But this can't be alternate history without talking about the time violent extremists in the South rose up against the government to defend their enslavement of their fellow Americans. Many of you probably know that Theodore Roosevelt was President of the United States in Harry Turtledove's The Great War Trilogy, which is part of the Southern Victory, or some like to call it Timeline 191 series, that began in 1997. 
In this alternate history, the so-called Confederacy wins independence and later Roosevelt gains fame after serving in the U.S. Army during the Second Mexican War. He is elected President of the United States in 1912, and after Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated in Sarajevo in 1914, Roosevelt sides with the Central Powers with their war against the Entente and their ally, the Confederate States of America. Making Roosevelt president of the United States in timelines where the so-called Confederacy became independent is insanely popular among alternate historians. While Turtledove might get the credit for popularizing the idea, he wasn't the first alternate historian to do so. Turtledove himself admits he borrowed the idea from the 1916 novella If the South Had Won the Civil War by McKinley Cantor. What's interesting is that even Cantor wasn't the first alternate historian to make Roosevelt president in a timeline where the so-called Confederacy was independent. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, yes, that Churchill, perhaps gets credit for being the first when he referenced the Rough Rider as present in his 1931 short story, If Lee Had Not Won the Battle of Gettysburg. What's most surprising is that, as far as I can tell, this is the one Roosevelt trope that Resnick hasn't touched. What kids, man? I think I will end my coverage of the alternate history of Theodore Roosevelt here. I'm sure I missed out on your favorite Roosevelt alternate history trope, but there is only so much time I have to talk about all the ways Teddy's life could have been different. Heck, I didn't even touch on all the ways the online community has featured him. Feel free to let us know what your favorite alternate Theodore Roosevelt trope is in the comments, or let me know what famous figures from history you'd like me to tackle next. Well, that's all i got to say in this subject. If you like what I do, please subscribe, share this video, support me on Patreon. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate historian. Bye!